Hello again. Uh, we're going to try a problem this time involving the concepts of work and energy, in this case kinetic energy. Um, this will also involve a spring as well, so though this is actually uh, work done on a spring and that the spring itself, one thing, even though that Hooke's law does apply here, take note that this force is a function of position. So it's actually a variable force even though it is simply linear. Um, so let's see what we're given at first. Let's try this out. Uh, cumin is a spice used in a cooking. Very savory dishes, but that's not even our case here. Take note that we're also given the condition that it's frictionless. So that is important um, and we'll do some problems involving friction later on as well. The initial speed before it hits the spring is half a meter per second and it hits a pr pretty hefty uh, spring that takes about 750 newtons to stretch at one meter. So just take a step back and take a look at this problem really quickly. Um, the mass of this object not so much. Even the speed, not so fast. When it hits a really big spring, and as a matter of fact, we are looking for what distance it will stretch, um, we actually don't expect this to be very big. Okay, just because what we're given. And uh, formulas that we'll need here, since we're talking about uh, work and energy, we will actually need um, the net work equals uh, the change in kinetic energy, the work energy um, formula. And it's probably best to say that net work, work done by non-conservative forces, work done by conservative forces, um, other formulas will need kinetic energy and also work done by the spring which actually is our uh, conservative force um, is negative one half k uh, x squared or in this case it's going to be d okay so this is actually our work done by conservative forces. Okay, and let's see what we get. You're actually good to go. This problem is actually not too bad. Well, nothing's too bad once you already know how to do it, right? That's hence all the reasons for these videos. Hopefully, you'll be able to get the techniques that we use uh, to solve these types of problems because it's almost a culmination of all the kinematics ones. K equals delta KE. And I'm going to break this down. Break it down. And so I'm going to split network to this. I don't actually have to, but watch what happens here. There actually is no work done by friction. That's the word friction. And this is actually work done by the spring. So my formula becomes this. Okay, this now comes that. And not only that, kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. Uh, one uh, given that I forgot, because it's asking momentarily stop so our final velocity is actually zero so that would make the kinetic energy wouldn't that make the kinetic energy also zero as well These things are coming together our work by the spring is negative one half kd squared that's going to be zero minus oh negative negative that's initial so that's cool so uh, I like to do all the algebra first because it simplifies quite nicely. 
almost parallel. Uh, the negative one half actually goes away. And remember, we're trying to solve for D. The distance that the spring is compressed. So what are we left behind with? KD squared. OK. Divide both sides by K. OK. And then take the square root. We do that all in one step. Boom. That becomes d is equal to the square root mass over k. And then from here, it's just pretty much plug and chug. The mass is not that big. And even the speed is not that fast. But take note that is squared. Otherwise, your units will not, and we're dividing by a very big number, and we're square rooting on top of that. So that's uh, this is already pretty much the answer. But let's take a look at the units really closely. We have kilograms, um, meters, second squared, newton divided by meter. Um, but remember that newton. Let me erase that. It's actually kilogram meter per second squared. Only the second is squared. Still have another meter there. And that this it's actually meter squared second squared. Okay, so the kilogram cancels out. That meter cancels out that. And if you look at that, we're only left with still under the square root. Meter squared because square root of meter squared is meters, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so you put that all in your cal uh, calculator. Okay, the units should be meter, and sure enough, we're given a 0 0.012 meters, or you can do 1.2 times 10 to negative 2 meters, or uh, the book actually has it like this, centimeters. Either way, that is our final answer. And take note, uh, this is an application of the work kinetic energy principle. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. Ciao.